So John, thanks for joining me and, and I'm excited to have this discussion about small modular reactors. Now Canada has a long history of, of safe nuclear energy and here's where SMRs come in. We're on the cusp of exciting new nuclear technology to add to our generation mix. Uh, but just to help me understand better and help the uh, audience understand better, when we're talking about small modular reactors, besides being smaller than what, what we're used to, what are they? Small modular reactors are nuclear fission reactors that are designed to be uh, smaller in size, but larger in numbers than most of the world's uh, conventional fleet that people think of. So if you, if you, if you sort of visualize in your head, um, these small modular reactors are like desktop computers compared to the conventional uh, reactors, which would be mainframe computers. So they're scalable, uh, they're distributed, they're distributed, um, they can be sized, uh, you know, the, the name, as the name modular implies, they can be sized to meet a particular load or, or function. Um, they're very responsive, they're very responsive, so they make an excellent partner for variable sources of electricity, like uh, wind and solar, for example, which uh, tend to produce, um, you know, in sort of cycles throughout the day, and, and of course solar doesn't produce it uh, at night, right? So, uh, so this is important because these small modular reactors can be a, a great partner instead of, let's say, coal plants or gas plants, which are, are used globally to help with um, uh, firm up variable sources of uh, renewables. But, but most importantly, uh, these small modular reactors are mass produced. So th this is the really important distinction. Um, you know, conventional nuclear plants are very large infrastructure projects that are prone to all of the same uh, types of, um, uh, you know, cost levels and uh, complexity of uh, build outs that, that all major infrastructure projects have. Whereas small modular reactors are either uh, manufactured entirely in a manufacturing plant or else their components are manufactured um, in, in a manufacturing plant and then shipped to site. So uh, what we're talking about here is being able to take advantage of the um, mass production the same way that uh, we've been able to achieve cost efficiencies with you know, wind turbines or solar panels, for example. This is the, 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 the promise of small modular reactors. So, so more of a, a prefab solution where, where uh, costs and the work and the assembling, I, I guess, uh, in theory, should be able to be better controlled because it's you know, within that indoor environment. That, that's absolutely right. Uh, so, so controlled, and then you get economies of uh, scale as you, as you mass produce them. Uh, as I mentioned, many of these are built entirely uh, in the plant and shipped to a particular site. Uh, some of them don't have to be refueled for, you know, like 20 years, for example, right? So you'd, you'd put it at a mining facility, for example, uh, and uh, it would be producing heat uh, um, and, and, st and steam and electricity, maybe even producing hydrogen, uh, because these small modular reactors are really like little mini high temperature heat producing devices that you can uh, produce various things from. Electricity is what often jumps to mind, but there are other applications as well that make them uh, you know, very useful in these heavy industry um, settings. And so they'd be delivered on site, uh, maybe moved to another part of the mining operation uh, and then brought back to the manufacturing plant to be uh, refueled or decommissioned 20 years later, for example. So really remarkable technology. Uh, so in December 2020, so not that long ago, uh, Canada had released its small modular reactor action plan outlining the next steps to uh, leverage clean nuclear energy in the fight against climate change. Uh, so maybe you could share some of the more salient points from that action plan. Right. So first, maybe uh, for your, your listeners and your readers, I'll differentiate between the uh, SMR roadmap and the SMR action plan. The SMR roadmap came out in 2018 after uh, two years of consultation. And uh, basically, it set out a path uh, way for the development and deployment of small modular reactors in Canada. Um, and that has made uh, quite a splash uh, internationally in terms of giving Canada recognition as being a first mover in small modular reactors. But more importantly, it really organized industry to get its act together 
uh, in terms of how it's going to develop and deploy small modular reactors. And so we have a, uh, we've got a, a very detailed plan that is brought together for uh, major utilities and technology providers uh, looking at how we develop and, and deploy these using our Canadian nuclear laboratories and, and you know, some of the other uh, amazing uh, assets that we have in this country. So it gave us a plan and we're well organized. What the action plan is, so that was the roadmap, what the SMR action plan is, uh, was a consultation with a very broad sector, a uh, very broad spectrum of Canadian society. Um, it is essentially an expression of demand or support for small modular reactors being introduced into each of these various areas. And so uh, you will have, uh, for example, uh, the Mining Association of Canada coming forward and saying, um, you know, we support, uh, we support small modular reactors as a tool to help our sector decarbonize for the following reasons. And we commit to doing the following actions uh, to support that and to make it happen if uh, the federal government will come forward with industry to, to make SMRs available. So it, uh, it, it brought more than a hundred interested partners like mining, uh, for example, is one of those, but also indigenous communities and others uh, who expressed their own interest in why they need small modular reactors as a tool as we work towards net zero 2050. It produced 50 recommendations um, uh, in terms of from, from their perspectives, uh, how SMRs should be uh, rolled out and adopted. And of course, if you want to look at indigenous communities, you know, their recommendations had a lot to do with, we need to be consulted and engaged and understand the technology and understand how it's going to benefit us and how we can partner with it before we say yes, that would be an example of a recommendation. And then uh, importantly, it's also tracking um, actions that came out of the SMR roadmap. So there are about 500 actions that industry is currently um, executing on and that government is tracking to ensure that we're world leaders in this technology. 500 actions that's a that's yeah. no easy feat i hope there's a well, lot of people it, working on it <laughs> well you know what we, we so industry has set up uh, something called the small modular reactor secretariat which is uh is actually tasked with ensuring that industry is doing everything it needs to do to to to, to make canada world leader do you think as part of that action plan canada's north uh, or far north will be included as part of that action plan because i seem to recall and i can't remember which territory it was maybe all of them uh had expressed an interest in in smr technology yeah we, we see uh small modular reactors playing a vital role in northern communities um and in fact i'm going to differentiate here a little bit uh, anthony because uh, the small modular reactors, they, they come in a variety of different sizes and, and technologies, frankly, but sizes. But when we're speaking about a lot of northern communities, we're talking about very small modular reactors, right? And uh, these units could be uh, brought into a northern community and be providing both uh, heat um, uh, as well as electricity. And of course, there are no emissions. It's very clean. The technologies are extraordinarily uh, safe, right? They're uh, fully automated, and uh, you know, just the next generation of of uh, safety features and automation built in. But I think a, a really important uh, element to all of this is, um, you know, northern communities, especially uh, the indigenous uh, communities and populations. Uh, are going to need to look at this technology, uh, understand it, um, uh, decide whether or not it's the type of technology that they want to embrace and, and use in their communities. Um, the indications that we are getting from uh, many northern communities is that there is a lot of interest in this, particularly because uh, right now they're having to deal, uh, many of them, the off-grid communities anyway, with um, diesel and all of the expense and the interruptions uh, that can come with um, with bringing diesel in, uh, not to mention that you know global warming itself is making that whole proposition riskier, right? Trying to get the supply of uh, of diesel into those communities when the per permafrost is is uh, is uh, disappearing faster than than usual. Uh, now, one of the things I want to ask you. And this may be in conjunction with, or, or it might be a totally separate thing altogether, uh, but we had published news uh, December 2019 this time about several provinces coming together, uh, signing a memorandum of understanding to collaborate on the development and deployment of small modular reactors. They were Ontario, New Brunswick, and Saskatchewan. Uh, is there anything different happening on, on their side of those three provinces? 
So interesting you brought that up, Anthony. So since, since that time, Alberta uh, has signed on, specifically in uh, using the very high temperature steam that can be produced uh, with these small modular reactors to help decarbonize the way that they extract oil and gas, right? But yeah, these provinces, um, Alberta, Saskatchewan, uh, Ontario, New Brunswick, all see uh, important roles for small modular reactors in helping various parts uh, and sectors of their economy decarbonize and reach that net 2050 uh, goal. And, and, and in many cases, you know, it's the, it's the outstanding um, solution, uh, depending on, on what the application is. So, so that coordination has been very important. And, and I'd say it's a real bright um, spot between federal and provincial government relations, which are sometimes strained when it comes to, you know, the federal government setting ambitious targets about how Canada is going to contribute to combating global warming and then looking to the provinces to implement solutions. Well, they need the tools, right? Uh, it's amazing that we've got solar and, and wind that are, are relatively low cost now and storage, uh, battery storage coming online. But we're going to need you know, massive amounts of uh, electricity generation. We're going to need specialized tools like small modular reactors that can um, produce high temperature heat and steam and even produce hydrogen as well as electricity. So uh, we need every tool at our disposal uh, to, to meet these goals. And I think these provinces are saying this is an important tool in our toolbox. John, one final question for you before I let you go. So we, we, we've kind of covered, you know, where we're at, how some of these things started with the roadmap and then with the action plan, uh, various uh, communities and industries that could benefit from SMR technology. So what is the next milestone for the advancement of small modular reactor technology in Canada? Well, um, let's, when we talk about milestones, let's take a moment and speak about timelines. Uh, people are often under the impression that small modular reactor technology is far off. And uh, the reality is that we're expecting to see the very small reactors uh, beginning to be deployed as early as 2026. Uh, we, we know that we're going to see uh, the first small modular reactor connected to the electricity grid uh, in uh, Ontario in 2028, um, Ontario Power Generation as uh, announced that it will connect its first SMR in 2028. Saskatchewan has said that it will uh, connect multiple units um, in lockstep with Ontario. So these things are are here and they're ready to uh, they're ready to be used. So when I, when you mention milestones, um, you know we we think of of timing. But I think the other important aspect here around milestones, Anthony, is Canada kind of has to decide whether it's going to be the um, the developer uh, and manufacturer of select technologies that are useful in our economy, but, but will then be used uh, in other economies, uh, or whether we're just going to acquire um, the technology from you know, the United States or the, the United Kingdom, um, which are, are now beginning to ramp up their efforts on small modular reactors. So we're at a, we're at a very pivotal point right now where the utilities, uh, these four utilities that I spoke about, um, need to make a determination about whether or not they're actually going to continue vest investing in these technologies and rolling them out. Um, so we're we're hopeful that the federal government is is going to come forward with a uh, with a, a real expression of support with some matching uh, funding to what the industry is putting in to develop these first of a kind technologies and. And that's the milestone that we're focused on right now. There's a whole bunch of other things that are going on in parallel, right? We've got those 500 actions that we were talking about, a lot of regulatory and um, related work, et cetera. But uh, we're really focused right now on whether or not Canada is going to take advantage of being a first mover here and, uh, and uh, develop these technologies here at home. Well, I hope we do. I hope it is us who uh, who leads the charge in, in this technology rather than waiting for everyone else to develop it. And then we're just buying from others. It'd be nice to say that this is, you know, Canadian homegrown. Well, we're, we're, we're really well positioned to do that, right? As you, as you mentioned, Anthony, we've got over 60 years of uh, experience as a, a world-class tier one nuclear power um, provider. Uh, with an impeccable uh, reputation and a, an incredible regulator uh, who's you know ensuring that we are, are doing these things in the most cost effective and responsible manner possible. And uh, right now, just on a sort of you know closing note, um, 
we've got 12 different technologies going through the review and licensing process, right? So uh, I think we're, we're leading um, the world in terms of being able to develop and deploy these and these, these next few months, and especially the, the federal government's indication of support is gonna be, is gonna be vital. Thank you so much for, for taking time today to uh, help me better understand and hopefully help the audience better understand what it is when we talk about small modular reactors uh, and, and how they fit or could fit into our energy supply mix. Uh, because heavens knows we're going to need that energy if we want to electrify everything. Anthony, thank you very much. It's been a real, real pleasure.